activism of the 60s did have a lasting effect in generally civilizing the society. So women's rights, uh, gay rights, environmental concerns, uh, opposition to aggression, uh, lots of things have changed. But it led to a reaction, a very quick reaction. Uh, this is standard. You take a look back over history, typically after wars and depression and so on, there are periods of crisis. You have activism uh, and then repression. So after the First World War, you had Woodrow Wilson's Red Scare, the worst era of repression in American history. The depression in the Second World War led to a growth of radical democracy uh, all over the world, and it led to a serious repression. It took different forms in different places. In the United States, it took the form of the uh, anti-communist hysteria, which is called McCarthyism, but it actually began with the liberal Democrats. McCarthy took it to an extreme, and we, when he went too far attacking powerful institutions, he was quickly destroyed. But the general anti-communist hysteria, which is what it was, was used pretty much like Wilson's Red Scare to undermine independent thought, to silence criticism, to get people back into line, and so on. The so Vietnam War had the same effect, that by the late 60s, the Vietnam War had joined with other factors, eliciting a very substantial activism and protest, and it led to an immediate backlash. The activist movements were very bitterly attacked. The national political police, the FBI, were directed under four administrations, Kennedy and Johnson through Nixon, to attack and destroy independent activism. They began, of course, with the Communist Party, but that was very marginal. The American Indian Movement, the Puerto Rican activism, the Civil Rights Movement, the anti-war movement, the early feminist movement, the entire New Left, uh, the black nationalist movements, all were under severe attack by an official government program of repression, COINTELPRO. There's nothing like that now. Uh, and it went pretty far. It went as far as literal political assassination. And uh, the crisis of democracy that they saw was that there was too much democracy. Too many people were becoming active and engaged and pressing their demands and interests in the public arena. This posed a problem because the state can't respond to all of these. And so we have a crisis of democracy. Uh, we have to have what they called more moderation in democracy. People have to become passive, more apathetic. Uh, they have to be spectators, not participants. They were particularly interested in uh, what they called the failure of the institutions responsible for the indoctrination of the young. The schools, the universities, the churches are not indoctrinating the young properly. That's why we have these demonstrations, these activisms, these calls for rights and so on. So we have to introduce more discipline and control in various ways, which uh, converged into what became the, the neoliberal economic and social policies of the following generation. So in a way, activism won major achievements in cultural and social practices, but uh, beaten back in the economic sphere. Today, opportunities and circumstances are much greater because of the legacy that was won. Simply take uh, women's rights. The bare beginnings of the feminist movement were in the late 60s. By now, a lot of what was regarded as something you had to militantly fight about is simply taken for granted. In the United States, there were anti-sodomy laws until a couple of years ago. Now, things have changed substantially in those domains, and that makes a big difference. There are plenty of opportunities. Uh, what's necessary is will. The ch there's no single answer for everyone. No single, this is the way to do it for everyone. It depends who you are, what your circumstances are, what your concerns are. Uh, uh, where your engagements are, but the opportunities are enormous. And each individual just has to answer that question. How am I going to use the opportunities available to me to deal with the critical problems of the world? This coming generation is facing questions that have never arisen 
in the history of the human species. There are threats to survival that are very significant and that are imminent. The major ones are the threat of nuclear war, which is increasing. It's kind of almost a miracle that we've survived 70 years of this nuclear rage and it's getting worse. And the other is the environmental catastrophe, which is looming and will come unless uh, very significant steps are taken to avert it and reverse it. These are decisions that have to be made quickly and acted upon. So the responsibility of today's generation is just uh, colossal, extraordinary, and can't be put off. What do you need to survive? Water, food, clean air, and shelter. And what about a job to pay for those? And the freedom of movement to find them? With the current state of divisive politics, growing corporate power, and escalating climate change, these basic needs face critical challenges. So how will that affect you? How long will you be able to access or afford these basic human needs?